<laughs> Hello. <laughs> I just went I just went running off to find something. But then I can't find it anyway, so hang on. Okay. Welcome. Hello, hello. How are you doing? It's uh, Treasure Thursday. Thursday Treasures. Um, what are you all up to? Mr. Moore just, is just preparing himself. It's going to be the two of us today. And as you can see, work boots and ripped jeans means business. Today we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, the interesting reclamation, the exciting reclamation you can find. Happy Thursday, Paul. Um, and particularly, when I do um, talks on, on salvage and reclamation, I kind of talk about opening your eyes and looking at things with new eyes and looking at things in a different way, training your brain to look at things in a different way. Um, and we're going to just talk a little bit about... Da -da 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 -da. Gin. Gin on a Thursday. Who doesn't need gin when it's coming to the end of the week, especially at the moment? We're going to talk a little bit about the gin bar and how we created it using some treasure that we found. Um, and I will show you, here we go, where I found it. So, one of the things we always do is rummage around salvage yards and reclamation fairs and decorative fairs. And a real favourite of mine, I've mentioned it a few times, but I don't care, I'll give them a plug again, um, Arthur Swallows Fairs. So they are absolutely brilliant. We go to the one in Cheshire and we've been to the one over in Yorkshire and they're in Lincoln, they're all over. And there's lots of them all over the country, not just AS Fairs. Um, but you'll see there the sorts of things you just... You just don't find anywhere else. Real proper treasure. And quite often it's a little bit dirty and a little bit dusty. Um, and when I saw these things, which I'd never seen before, I was like, what are those? So, can you see? In fact, this is a better picture. I actually nicked this one off the internet, so it's probably copywritten. So, um, this item was folded together, and there was three or four of them. Um, that's the top. Can you see there? And what they actually are is I um, looked at them on the stand and then had a chat with the person on the stand. They said that they were cigar moulds. So they're vintage cigar moulds. And, of course, as soon as, as soon as somebody says that, there you go. You can see it straight away, can't you? And they're all different sizes. So um, you can get these in all different sort of widths and thicknesses and lengths. And there were three of them um, at the Arthur's Falls Fair on this particular stand. And I think that she was asking... £12 each for them, which you kind of think, and actually, three of them, you think £36, quite a lot. You know when you're at a vintage fair and you think, 36 quid, it's quite a lot of money. But actually, when you look at purchasing shelves, how much more are they? And these are completely unique and completely bespoke. So when I saw them, my instant um, idea was to... And, and this is what I mean by training your brain. The more salvage and reclamation you play with and use and engage with, the more your brain will start thinking of really creative ways to, using, to use them. So as I looked at the... Um, whoop, one sec. Well, there you go. As I looked at the box, which was together, and then we opened them up and had a look at them, I was looking at the thickness of the box and thinking, what could I do with those? Could I turn them into something flat? Could I turn them into shelves? And that, obviously, is exactly what we've done here. So... thrown the fire thing on the floor. Um, so, <laughs> put that down, lift this up. Boop. I'll show you, with the use of my handsome assistant. Hello, my, my. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> um, do you something like a fish? That's Dave. Um, yes, I'm going to show you with my, uh, my gorgeous assistant how we did it. So, um, the perfect, the absolute perfect location. So, have a look around your house. Whenever you buy anything, sort of buy it and look at it for a bit and look for that perfect location in your house. And the perfect location here for us was just on the right-hand side of the chimney breast. So, you can actually see the chimney breast there, fireplace. And we have this little alcove, which I needed to be creative with and do something with. So, let's bring it over a little bit so you can see it actually a little bit better. Ooh, there you go. So I wanted to create something for all of my gin. <laughs> um, there you go. Go on, Mr. Morgis. Not that this is like blue job and pink job. Not that Mr. Morgis does all the practical stuff or anything. Just, you know, we like to get him off the sofa, get him involved. <laughs> Seems like he's done absolutely bugger all for the last two months. I can lean today. 
<laughs> yeah, when, when Sai saw these, and I had not a clue what they were, and she told me they were cigar, cigar holders and makers, and that's what they do. And I told her they were going to be shelves. She said they were going to be shelves, and I had not a clue <laughs> how and why. But luckily, we've got a really quite narrow alcove here. So, they're perfect for that. So, she said she wanted shelves. So, once again, like upstairs with the mirrors, she sort of laid them out on the floor and moved them about and did exactly the same here and where she wanted stuff and marking things up, yeah. moving it slightly, moving it over. How did she want them? Got a marking. And so. I also, also at that point, didn't just want them. So some people, when I talked about them originally, and you know when they were two together, yeah. and some people were saying, oh, that's really brilliant, but what a shame. You lose that gorgeous tactile nature of the indentations where the cigars used to be so then you've got to sort of start thinking a little bit creatively haven't you and start thinking about another material that you can maybe bring into your invention so of course the other material then was da -da 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 -da. On a sec. and here's one we prepared earlier what's the glass so um obviously you can imagine what we don't want is loads and loads of dust sitting in the bloody scar moulds all the time, so that would just drive you insane, wouldn't it, trying to dust it out or hoover it out. So we thought, and much more sturdy for your gin and your drinks, always thinking, up there for thinking, down there for dancing, always sensible to have a good surface for your gin, because then, um, I have got gin, it's over there, might have one in a minute. Has anyone, else, has anyone else got a gin and tonic ready to toast the shelves? So yeah, so, um, and this is obviously toughened glass, so I had this made, we had this made at a local glass and mirror manufacturers, I think that each piece was maybe, I think it's about eight or nine pounds for the, for the piece, so if you think about it, 12 quid for the cigar, but that's six pound each because we've split it, and then it's less, it's not, it's yeah. about, it was less than 20 pounds for each one, which I think was something bespoke. If you try and buy a shelving, unusual shelving online now, it's so expensive, isn't it? So any tricks you then, Mr. Moore, just carry on, carry on. So obviously, so I then worked out where she wanted stuff, and we had to work out, with the tape measure, the length of the shelf, Oh, it's going to stand on the wall. Where are they going to be? And mark them up with pencil. When it was white as well, we marked yeah. them up with pencil, didn't we? So she, so she marked up exactly where she wanted them. We went on, we went online because what we've used on here, and I don't know if you can see it, Sam. Do you want to just get the... One of those? Yeah. We've used what's called uh, a floating bracket, basically. Now, there's various types of floating brackets. There's some that's got a flange on the end where you screw onto the wall. This particular type, if you hold that, I will just show you exactly where we got them from and what they are. Uh, it's a bit like the ones you know. And I the don't know if you can see that. that, but that is exactly what they are, what they're called, and the price of them from Amazon. They'll be £10 yeah. for 10 Yeah. So that's Which exactly Which is pretty much a bargain, really, yeah. and you can get this. So a little, they're a little bit like, you know the big um, Ikea lac shelves that you used to get, or that you still get, and they're the big, wide, floating shelves, which always tip forward as well, they're an absolute nightmare, but these don't because they're quite narrow. Um, they've got the big bracket on the back, and they screw in the wall, and then they've got this protruding from the metal plate. Well, instead of using having the metal plate with the protrusions out of each side, these are just far narrower. And what they allow is they allow for something really quite small and delicate, um, and narrow to be wall mounted invisibly and so they're really good and they're like yeah as Mark said Mr Moore just uh, about ten, ten pound the good thing with them as well is they come with their own raw plug and the raw plug is what goes into the wall to that the screw goes into to make it a, a good secure fixing can't so, show you access in the wall though isn't it yeah so we've just taken one out so in fact okay in so fact I can just show you can you see Ooh, can you see there that's the, the metal head of the roll plug. So it's a special roll plug, which is extra long and extra deep and fits. It's yeah, because that's if you look at the length of that. length. Yeah, it's quite, quite long. Okay. Now, a good tip for this, a really good tip for this, when you, when you put it into your wall, a lot of size 10s, because it's, it's, it's a size 10 hole that you need for this. And 10 millimetre. 10 millimetre. A lot of size 10s. Like I've got a quite long. That's a big one you've got there, Mr. Morgis. Good tip. Measure your hand. Get it to where that, that's, that's the depth you need to be into your wall or into the brick, whichever, or into the stud work, whichever one, where you're going into. So get that, mark up that. A little bit of electrical tape or sellotape or anything. 
So put your mark how long you want it in, how far you want to push it into the wall, and put a little bit of electrical tape round, and then <clears throat> you can see when it's gone the depth that you need. That you need, you don't need to go any further than that, and you, obviously then you're not going shallow either, so that's perfect for that. Always measure your end and get your tape out. Boom. Um, so... So that's that. You don't need as long a drill no, bit. No, I mean, no, that's no. absolutely. That's... Let's just have a look. That's um, that's completely bonkers, isn't it? That drill bit. That's and that's only one left over from when we used to install wall ties in people's houses. So you can use a much small, a much shorter one, like a much shorter ten. Yeah, 10 but mil. make sure you get the right, the exact same the size, because these are ten mil, and you want a ten mil drill bit as well. Well, only if. Only if on the packet, so when you buy your um, fittings, your fittings and fixings will tell you what size drill bit you need. So it might not necessarily be a 10 mil, might it? The fitting, the packet might yeah, tell you you need 8 mil or whatever. So we're banging that into there. These just screw into it. So what we did, what, what you do first is put your shelf like that. You measure, whoops, let's turn this over. So yeah. can you see? We'll show you in a minute how we've cored the holes into the floating, into the cigar bracket. But basically, let's just move this camera. So you mark up, you mark up where you want fixings on the wall, and then put a pencil mark on whatever you're fixing to the wall, whatever you want to float, as it were, and then you marry those up, then you do your drilling and screw your bolt in, don't you? Sorry. So this just go into there, okay? And all they do. They're on a thread, so it's just screwed in. So that's why it's got to be nice and tight, and it's got to be solid into the brick. So we'll just screw that in, keep going, keep going, keep going. Sorry, can you whistle while I just do this? <laughs> I just, my, my brain just, I've just got a brain like a sewer, so I'm just thinking do blonde, so I'm just going to tie. Go on. Once you get it into there, because it's hexagon shape, just nick it up with a set of, with a spanner. Just nick it up so it's nice, nice and nice tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Whoop. Quick test of that. Solid. Okay? Like Sai said, we've got a little mark, and all we did was get, draw around a 10 mil hole, okay? 10 mil hole, put little lines across it to make so we find the centre point, get the centre point. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to drill. Obviously, this this is a this is a wood. Obviously, a wood drill bit, a core bit for wood. So um, you get that in the same size, the ten mil. Quick, for those that don't know, wood drill bits will always have the point on the top. Okay, so that you put it into the wood, that sticks in the wood, and that, that will that, that should basically you pivot. Helps so guide it in. It helps guide it in. So your wood drills are always that. Okay, if you use a a, a masonry drill, it won't go through your wood. All right, always use your wood drill. Your wood drill bit. And be when, if you are doing this, if you are doing this to any pieces of treasure, and <laughs> Paul's saying, go on, Mr. M, screw it. <laughs> mm. A little early for that. Might need some gin first. Um, so when you are doing any bits of treasure like this, measure twice, measure, in fact, don't just measure twice, measure five times. Um, so you didn't use a pillar drill to make it completely square. But it's, no, 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 didn't we didn't actually. So as long as you, if what we did actually was we clamped this, we clamped it down and then drilled in, you know, and if you are careful, you can do, but I think yeah. if you are, if you are careful, you can see actually, this is really, really narrow. So this is really narrow. And when that's gone in there, absolutely perfect. When that has gone in that one, oh, it's a little nibble. Slightly. But you know what? It's okay. I think that was the first one we did, and then the others were okay. After that, which is another good tip, after that, like Sai said, we had it clamped, I was drilling into it, Sai was stood in front of it, watching, the angle, sure. watching the angle of the drill. And well, we haven't got all, you know, we, we, we haven't, we're not joiners, so we haven't got all the stuff, so lots of people won't have this stuff, so you just have to be, take it really, take it slowly, get it straight, and watch what you're doing. So, yeah, yeah. then it goes on. Pass it. Watch Over. this, there you go. There 
you go. Lovely and solid. Lovely and solid. And then what I did was measure, obviously I measured them. Um, in fact, we actually installed them and then I measured and then I ordered the glass. That's another thing as well. People rush sometimes to order stuff. They rush to order the bits and pieces that they need in advance. And actually, if you take a little bit of time, because when we... The, the, the first idea was to put some blocks on so it was on top of this point. I don't know if you can see there's a little point which are the, um, the sections which hold the cigar moulds together. And I was going to put the glass on top, but actually I waited. And when we put them on, I actually preferred it. I'll just show you. I'll show you up close. And let me turn around and turn it around. Um, can you see? And I actually preferred it with the glass sitting there. And I haven't... I haven't... Um, used silicone or glue or anything to put the glass on because I want to be able to clean and dust it and it just it sits on beautifully so Ooh, so there you go there you go really um that's just sort of showing you one of the pieces of treasure so if any of you missed that at the start um I'll put it up on the live anyway but these were the cigar boxes that we found and as they say the yeah. proof the proof is always in the pudding <laughs> Jim. <laughs> gin. Gin. And then, and then what you need to do is you always need to buy gin, which is really, really tasty and doesn't have to be mixed necessarily with ice and lemon. Because when you are renovating, you don't always have time to wash up, do you? So I would recommend when making gin shells, if you buy strawberry or tasty Parma Viola gin, you can just drink it neat. Renovating. And I don't even like the stuff. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to um how long how long were we on for? How long were we on for? 18 minutes. Has anyone got any <laughs> well, I feel all giddy now? Has anyone got any questions? Has anyone got any questions before I go into another gin? <laughs> I don't think they do, Mr. Rogers. Is there anything else I you'd like to say about this little on tutorial? There. Where's your rainbow cocktail set from? Oh, you mean, you mean this? I'm obsessed. Um, this is from John Lewis, actually, and um, which is now shut, uh, which I'm distressed about. Um, and they also have, and I'm going to buy, um, they've also got a wine cooler. It's absolutely, it's boss, isn't it? And this... Um, this is so brilliant because if you're having like a really good day, um, you can just pour yourself a single measure and drink it straight out of the measure. But if you're having a really bad day, you can turn this upside down and have a double and then drink that, you see? So very, very handy, this little tool. And very, very beautiful. I'm a little bit obsessed with the colours. Um, what's the name of the auction, people? So it's not, um, it's not an auction that we go to. It's called Arthur Swallows Fairs. Um, they're on here. They're called um, At AS Fairs. And they're so brilliant. So what they do is they're an organisation which sets up fairs all over the country. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, different traders go each, each month, uh, twice a month, generally. Yeah, they and they do them at Lincoln as well. They have, um, they have decorative and salvage. They also have antiques fairs. They have all sorts of different stuff. And I've been going for probably about seven years now. And we've had some fantastic treasure for here from there. We've had some absolutely amazing treasure. And every time you go, you find something else amazing. And generally, yeah. Mr. Moore just goes, what the hell are you going to do with that? And I go... You'll see. Yeah, That's there's a beauty of them is it's <laughs> they, they're not like car boot sales. It's not a car boot sale, which I'm, and I'm not putting car boot sales down, but they are genuinely dealers who, mm. who also have an eye for stuff. Yeah. And they buy it and, and they want to, obviously, that's their living. And they, they travel all over the country and, and abroad, mm. some of the stuff they bring back. Oh, my goodness, yeah, some of the stuff. So we've had some with some beautiful, those French tomates that we've got in Tweeting Corner outside, those were from AS Fairs, those were from a French... Um, farmhouse and brought back by a really lovely girl who lives over in Yorkshire so we went over to pick them up and it's a really nice place to shop because you feel like you are supporting independent businesses yeah. you feel like you are buying stuff from people who are really passionate about what they do and really passionate about their purchases and their stands and their shops and we've made friends with some of the the traders and the stand holders because we're quite you know we're good customers and I've blogged about them on the blog and stuff so um yeah I highly recommend I do some talks there I was due to do some talks for them this summer but unfortunately obviously because at the minute that's all that's all kiboshed isn't it but hopefully later on in the summer um nice to see your curls again missy <laughs> 
you mean these? <laughs> Love treasure, we're quite limited down here in Devon and Cornwall. Anita's saying that because, let me tell you, Anita there, who's joined in on the live, me and her, so I'm not even kidding, it must be 25 years ago, Anita and I used to run a promotion for L'Oreal where we'd go all over the country selling graphic hair products and we'd got, we used to get into all sorts of trouble, honestly, we were very naughty, but we were very good saleswomen as well, so before we went to uni, we were off selling loads of hair products and graphic, which is, I don't know if any of you are really old, they used to sell graphic, um, used to buy graphic hair products by L'Oreal, it made you curls just amazing so she's laughing at me because i don't really often have very curly hair normally blow dry it straight and it reminds her <laughs> we used to be naughty selling graphic 1989 oh my god 1989 you see when curls were big right we're just we're just ramping on there one, oh, one more thing. Uh, you guys uh, talk about your curls no now. no no because no. uh, they're growing out <laughs> um at the swallows fair as well some of you that seen our garden there's a um, a guy there that's got his own nursery and he brings uh, he brings a full wag wagon full of all the plants that he's bought he's he's reared at home uh, in his nursery he brings them all they're a lot cheaper than anywhere else and they're absolutely they're so healthy yeah. it, honestly it's so i don't do the gardening but i like walking out into it because it, every, nearly everything in that garden is from a lot, lots of the plants are from there, actually. Yeah. Lots of the plants. Um, and, you know, because you put me on the spot, the name of the nursery has just escaped me. But it's miles away in Lincoln, I think it is. It's we, so good we, as we well. Down there. So, the plant guy. Oh, Alison, you be, yeah, the plant guy is amazing. He's, he, what, my just brain has just, no, my brain has just stopped working. <sighs> but he is. He's incredible. So, lots of reasons to go. Lots of reasons to go. So I hope you've enjoyed that little live on um, on gin. using salvage. Gin, <laughs> gin, I'm going to have another one now. Um, using salvage, why to use it, how you can do things that are completely bespoke. I adore my gin shelves, not because of the gin, don't obviously you, because of the gin. Me, but I adore, no, I adore you. But I adore my gin shelves because they are completely bespoke. No one else. Of course, you guys could go out and buy some cigar molds. Of yeah. course you could. And you could create your own gin shelves. But they'll be completely different to that. They won't look the same. They won't be in the same consider um configuration you will put them against a different paint background you'll maybe do the glass differently you will arrange them differently so they will look completely different to, to here and that's the beautiful thing about treasure um, and that's a beautiful that's the reason why we're quite passionate about using salvage and reclamation and we're going to focus each thursday on a different different thing and let's do some little practical tips um when are you doing the painting live oh i don't know when should we do painting when should we do some painting tips we could do that next wednesday why don't we do that next wednesday on is the it, wednesday world is that the painting or the spraying um painting painting like painting tips let's do a painting one next wednesday shall we okay brilliant right okay we're off ski have a great thursday enjoy your thursday whatever you're doing um stay safe everybody stay safe stay we, we need, in stay we need positive the Morgis mafia back next week we do we need the more mafia back and we need you more just going back when we start our events again yeah hey ho right nice one mr m so it's good night from me and it's good night from him good night <laughs>